happy friday my good friends uh thank you so much for joining me on yet another episode of finance friday thank you so much for joining i almost actually did not film today's video i've been a bit tired and under the weather this week so i figured let's have something a bit light a story time i'd like to tell you guys about my job loss story um and some of the lessons that i learned after losing my job in 2019 i think this is a very important conversation to have especially because i have been hearing of a lot of layoffs in big and small companies and i thought that maybe Maybe I can share my story on here and hoping that um, and I hope that even as I share with you guys some of the lessons I learned after losing my job that it's gonna be a bit beneficial and encouraging to some of you who uh, have either experienced that are already experiencing it or are worried about losing your job in 2023 so thank you so much for joining me let's get into it <music> So in 2019, I lost my job and it happened in the most ridiculous way possible. You know, these things you never think can or will ever happen to you because you're too young, you're too productive, etc. It happened to me. So I finished school in uh, 20, towards the end of 2016, but I graduated in 2017. And, and I got a job before graduation. How exciting was that? So I did a Bachelor of Economics and Finance in KU. Um, and after that, I started working in an investment company, first as uh, someone in admin, and then eventually I was able to get a position in the department I really wanted to work in, which was uh, the investments department. So I worked worked for 2017, um, 2018 and 2019 and towards the 2019, uh, towards 2019, I lost my job. So this is how it happened, which is absolutely ridiculous. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section if you have experienced this or have had someone who's experienced this. Now, we knew that the company was laying off uh, people because of uh, rather liquidity issues. So it's not that it was something very new. But for some reason in my head, I never thought that it would happen to me because I earned very little. <laughs> I used to earn 40000 every month gross. So I figured that, I mean, I'm earning too little for this company to let to let me go. I get people who are earning way more, much more being sacked because that would save the company more money. So anyway, so this morning I go to work. Um, it's just a, a normal day. Of course, you've been hearing maybe the couple of a couple of the past months, maybe three months, four months, people have been losing their jobs. Um, but I, I mean, I just went in normal day around maybe lunch hour there i got called into a meeting by my manager and she started explaining to me just the same story that i'd had before that the company was having some liquidity problems etc and that they were letting me go so i wasn't being given notice that they will let me go towards the end of the month or in three months they were letting me go that day so the instruction after that meeting was to hand in company property so your laptop your access card and everything um and they were gonna give me two months worth of my pay so that particular month and then uh the month that followed i mean i I, I do not even think that I remember very well the feeling that I had ap apart from shock. Um, so the only person I called then was um, my mom, of course, to tell her that, you know, this is happening. And then I think I called my boyfriend at that time and also t told him that... Um, I mean, I was losing my job. I handed in company things and that is how I lost my job. Like I, I went into the office that day to do what I usually do. And I came out of work that day without a job and without a plan. Now, 
I will not get into the details of what happened after that in terms of like my emotional well-being, but it was a really, really tough time. I remember not being able to leave the house for like two months, uh, rather two weeks, sorry, because I was just like, okay, what exactly am I going to do? Where am I going to go from here? Um, and so maybe because it's now been a bit um, over... I don't know, maybe four or five years since that happened. Between that period and where I am right now, I've learned some important lessons. Maybe I'm going to share like seven of them as I just take you through, you know, the motions that I went through and some of the things that losing my job taught me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first lesson that I learned was don't prioritize your job over your career. Now, give me a chance to explain this. Over the three years that I was ex um, employed, I really, really, really feel like I gave my employer all my hours. Um, the working conditions were in, su or rather, were in such a way that I could work from morning and sometimes have to extend all the way to. I mean, I can tell you a number of times we left the office past midnight or some minutes to midnight and that was pretty normal in that company if you guys know the working conditions of like investment companies um audit companies audit firms and all that you do know that that is usually a possibility like you work past the normal eight to five we never had an eight to five and the most ridiculous part was you were not paid for overtime. So it was not considered overtime. It was just company culture, really. That's just um, what happens towards end month or during busy season. So over the three years, I never really did anything. I knew I could probably have, I actually was trying to pursue a certification, but because I was so busy trying to give my employer all the hours. And then of course, you know, when an employer creates an environment in such a way that if you're not showing up in that way, working as, uh, you know, extra hours, just like everyone else, including the managers, it, it kind of like came with a bit of guilt, right? So, um, that's the one thing that I learned. I gave all my hours. I wasn't able to maybe upskill, learn a new skill or diversify my life in terms of networking and all that. So I never did anything. And I think that's one of the things now that in retrospect, I look back, I always tell people jobs come and go, but careers are long term. So don't just give all, all your effort and um, your time to your employ your current employer. I'm not saying that give the bare minimum Minimum, but all I'm saying is that if you have an opportunity to grow and to upskill, go back to school, network, whether that is in rotary clubs or whatever it is that is available for you, please prioritize your career over your current employer. Because no matter how much you bend over backwards for your employer, putting in all the hours and, um, you know, doing extra, just hoping that this will actually help secure your job. In my experience, I know everyone's experience is different. I actually did learn that that was never going to secure my job. If they are letting people go, I don't think they consider um, how much you bent over backwards for them. So I would say prioritize your long-term career um, because I still have a career right now, even though I lost my job. So I would say prioritize your, your, your career, which is more long-term than your current employer. I think that would have really, really helped me had I just taken the chance to, even if it's over the weekend, just learn something, uh, network or even upskill. The second thing that I learned, especially because I did not have savings, was that an emergency fund is mandatory. Whether you're living with your parents and you think that your parents are your emergency fund or you think you work for one of the best companies in the world that has no histories of letting people go or you just feel like your life is pretty much set up, save. Even when you do not have a specific reason why you need to save, no one ever sees a job loss coming. I mean, you could always, I mean, some companies you see because it's something that has been ongoing, but I've, I've come to really discover that it's sometimes you may actually just not see it coming and losing your job can happen because of many reasons, maybe layoffs, but sometimes it's because you've fallen sick. You've been on payroll, maybe six months and you, you've been in hospital. Most companies will actually not put you uh, on payroll for more than six months even if you are unwell. So save, save, save. Without an emergency fund, you're pretty much one emergency away from a financial crisis. And we don't want that. So please um, 
ensure that you set up an emergency fund i do have a video that i did maybe last week or two weeks ago about how to set up an emergency fund which is pretty much an account that can sustain you at least six months in case of um job loss or you've lost your ability to make an income i'm gonna link it down in the description box below so please ensure that you have an emergency fund i didn't have savings and that period uh, between 2019 and 2020 before i figured out what i wanted to do outside of employment it was really really tough i depleted the little savings i had probably i only had money that could last me two months so after the two months it was just really difficult from there to figure out how else i can sustain myself so you even if things are good like really 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 good there's no harm in saving so save and have an emergency fund whether things are good or not good the third lesson that i learned is that failure is the best teacher i never knew or even believed that i could make or earn more outside of employment like no one would ever have convinced me in fact i remember getting this job and getting paid fifty thousand, uh especially towards the third year like i really was expecting maybe a bump in my pay not so much but i was expecting like fifty thousand, right and that seemed like such a big pay rather, rather i mean that's that's where i was mentally right um and i think failing and losing my job really opened me up to kind of like seeing what other things i would do outside of employment now that i look back three years um later i i up to date i still tell people that losing my job was one of the best things that has happened to my life yet then i did not feel like that but now i do feel um strongly that that was one of the best things that happened to me because it pushed me to look beyond employment and it wasn't just losing my job guys it was losing my job and applying for jobs attending interviews and getting over like over 20 regret emails when you've gone through that through that and if you have gone through that first i want to affirm that what you're feeling is 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 a feeling that will pass because around that time i really did feel like a failure i remember not wanting to check social media because people who we had gone to school with and who graduated were doing so much better than i was i remember um you know seeing people getting jobs and you know someone applying and i mean someone who even graduated after you doing so much and i felt very worthless i felt stupid i was wondering am i not good enough am i not smart enough um and and so that really pushed me to start exploring what else i could do outside of employment right and now i actually look back and remember that all i wanted was fifty thousand kenyan shillings as a monthly pay and it is absolutely ridiculous to me now because that's how much i'm charging one client for like a 16 week uh, program to coach them right and i'm working with a lot of clients multiple clients and charging um corporates to uh, allow me to train their staff i never could have thought out of the box now i'm not saying that that is definitely going to be your story but for me the fact that i lost my job and the fact that i was rejected so many times forced me to look outside of employment and to think out of the box and ask myself with what i have right now what can i do and that is how i started considering like freelancing like online writing because it was the most immediate thing i could do for money because remember i didn't have an emergency fund that could have sustained me even six months i only had two months worth of expenses which came from the salary that i was paid and a little bit of savings that i had managed to start uh, to start making and so um you know exploring the freelance world and kind of like understanding that even as a graduate um i could still explore freelancing and see what i can do for extra money that opened a world of opportunities that i'm so grateful for even at this point so sometimes failing and losing your job is that extra nudge that some of us need to think out of the employment box the fourth lesson that i learned was that you are more than what you did in uni and you are more than the current job that you are doing right now it is possible to pivot and it is possible for you to actually make money outside of what you did in campus 
Now, for me, it's a little bit different because I did do a Bachelor of Economics and Finance and I was working in an investment company. It pretty much seemed like I was um, just doing exactly what I was supposed to do according to what I, I studied in school. However, what I do right now is um, an amalgamation of more than just what I did in uni. Yes, I did do a Bachelor of Economics and Finance. Yes, I did work in an investment company. I do understand that for some people that just seems like the natural progression of things would ideally be that i work in another like in the finance industry like in a farm or in an audit company that's where i was looking again it's not where i am right now now i am into content creation i'm welcoming people to my youtube channel <laughs> every week but i'm also coaching um and training individuals groups and companies now how did that happen? It was because I, I kind of like looked at what else I could do. And naturally, I've always been a very confident speaker and a very confident orator. I've always had um, the gift of, you know, working with people and being able to explain concepts in a way that people can understand. And so before I figured that out, remember, I was doing online writing. I've always also loved to write. And so what I'm just trying to say is that even if you've lost your job or if you're worried about losing your job i feel like um had i just maybe figured it out earlier enough that i didn't have to just look for jobs that were finance or oriented um i could probably have uh, taken less time to get to where I am today. So what I'm just trying to say is that I learned I'm more than my degree of Bachelor of Economics and Finance. And I'm more than just uh, working in an investments company. I have some natural giftings, a lot of life experiences from where I come from. I shared earlier on that I grew up poor and I had to learn how to budget for such little money from high school age. And so for me, budgeting is something that life pushed me into learning and understanding because otherwise i would not have i mean survived right and so um combining what i just my degree and having worked in an investment company to learn a little bit about how people can invest their money and then my own life experience of growing up poor and having to budget for little money that's i mean all those things now culminated into me realizing that i could coach and train people on financial literacy based off of my life experiences but also what i um have experienced in the workplace and being backed also by what i did in school it is easy to pivot guys i have talked to my clients who have worked in a particular industry for a very long time lost their jobs or they left for one reason or the other and they have taken a six month certification in like software engineering for instance or virtual assistance and now they have completely pivoted from an in you know mechanical engineer to a virtual assistant i actually do have a friend of mine called velma if you don't already know how you can search her online virtually by Alma. I mean, she's a virtual assistant right now, but what she did in school was completely different. Hi, Velma, if you're watching me. Um, so all I'm just trying to say is that understand that you're more than what you did in school. I feel like that will make your experience and that fear of losing your job a bit more bearable. Still on that note, the fifth thing, don't underestimate your natural giftings. Guys, if anyone anyone at all ever told me that i would be coaching and training today i would not have believed you i was that kid i mean you guys know people who just are born you know talking i'm one of those people i've never been i used to have this <laughs> i used to have these goals when i was in high school and probably even primary school if i do remember well just promising myself that from monday i will keep quiet i will not be kihere here um and just because some people just assume that you talk too much or um you know again in kiswahili you're kihere here and you grow up thinking that that is a bad thing but the more uh, self-aware I have become, the more self-confident I've become, even in therapy, working with someone who, um, who has helped me to see my natural giftings, it, I mean, I came to discover that I'm actually a very, very good orator. I'm a confident speaker. I'm a natural at teaching and explaining concepts and coaching. And, and that is how I make my money today. 80% of my money comes from 
coaching individuals and companies and groups, right? And so I love to tell people there are things that you do naturally that you probably have never thought can make you money. I make money talking like that's what i do for a living i talk to people and training and coach people right so don't underestimate so whether that is photography for you or you're very good with children i actually have had a client who's super good with children um and she started doing child development consulting to help parents who um are having a problem with uh, you know terrible tools and all that don't underestimate your natural giftings they can make you money so i mean i'm such a firm believer that where your passion is your purpose lies there and where your passion lies your money lies there too i feel like coaching has become such a um and i mean it has changed my life because it's something i've always been passionate about helping people to become the best version of themselves um and and wh while i started doing that i found my purpose and i am also making like times 10 what i used to make as an employee just because i've been able to tap into my natural gifting so do not underestimate your natural giftings you could make money and School does not teach you how to do that. So it requires a lot of self-introspection, getting to know yourself, learning your um, your natural giftings and trying to see how you can monetize them. The sixth lesson that I learned is that losing your job will not kill you. I legitimately would lose sleep at night, especially when people started being laid off. I, I mean, I sometimes I could just wake up at night wondering what will happen to me. I do not have save, enough savings. I don't have a fallback plan. I wasn't depending on my parents. Then um, my family does depend on me. Um, And so I was, I mean, I, I used to think that that's the worst thing that could ever happen to me. But I just want to encourage you, if you've lost your job or if you're scared of losing your job, it's not the worst thing that can happen to you. I know in that moment, that's how it feels like, but I'm here. I survived and I did not survive just because I got another job. I survived because one, God, but two, I, I mean, I was able to pivot and to look outside of employment and maximize on what was available for me. I, I, as I told you guys, there was not much, but I knew I could hear people would do online writing. And so I was just looking within my circles and just trying to find out from people, do you know someone who can give me online writing jobs? Because I lost my job. I couldn't start coaching start coaching immediately because with business you have to give it time so i looked for the most immediate thing that i could have done to make money which was online writing my bills didn't didn't care that i lost my job they needed to be paid asap so i was just trying to see what exactly can i do to cater to my bare minimums right and as i was doing that I was also exploring what else I could do outside of it. And this is how I stumbled up, um, I stumbled upon coaching and content creation, which is what I now do on a full-time basis. So you will not die. You will survive. Take it from me. You will not die. You will get through this tough season with a good support system. And even if you don't have a support system, I didn't have a lot of support, but I think the self-confidence that I've always had and just kind of like having the mental capability to just be very resilient, even in tough times and difficult times, you will get on the other side. We usually, I know it feels like that's the worst thing that could happen to you, but I just want to encourage you with a good support system um, and just looking at some of the things that you can do with what you have right now, then you will get through it. Even if it's going to happen to you in 2023, believe me, you will survive job loss. It has happened to the best of us. It keeps happening and you're going to get on the other side. So just even if you've, you, you're going through this season right now, encourage yourself and don't just don't don't bam you're allowed to feel bad you are allowed to feel like a failure i felt like a failure a lot for many months but also realize that only you can get yourself out of that situation capitalize on your networks your natural giftings even your degree i mean keep applying for jobs what I'm just trying to say is do not give up. It's not going to be a permanent situation. This is me 
four years since I lost my job doing incredibly well. So you are not going to stay there forever. Finally, I learned to hope for the best but also to prepare for the worst. As I told you guys, at no given point in time, did I thought I would lose my job. Interestingly, I still had the mindset that um, getting laid off or being um, termed redundant was something that would happen to way older people. I was 25, guys. I mean, I was so young. <laughs> Losing your job, your first job at the age of 25 is not something that people think would happen to them however i have come uh, that experience taught me to always hope for the best plan for the best anticipate the best but also prepare for the worst okay this is where things like as we spoke about earlier emergency funds come in this is where a plan b comes in and now that i'm in business i have um two social media platforms that are doing well this youtube channel and my instagram i make money off of them i have my coaching business but anything could happen i could lose any of my platforms today because we hear of people getting getting hurt and losing their accounts. Something could happen to my health and I'm not able to sustain coaching maybe for a particular uh, season. Losing my job taught me to always have a plan B and a plan C if possible. And that takes a lot of, as I said, self-introspection, right? Get to, I mean, I always love to tell people, think, if I lost my job today, if I lose my business today, what else can I do? I think having like a, a list of like five things. So today, no, if I wasn't coaching, I would do this or this or that or the other. It helps. And that is an ongoing process. You don't just figure it out immediately. It's something that is an ongoing process. I'm not saying that now we are pessimistic. All I'm saying is that I think it helps you to have a much softer or rather a softer landing when you have an idea of three or four other things. So Think outside of the current employer that you have, outside of the current career that you have, outside of the current business that you are running. If anything happened to that, what else can you do? Don't wait to figure that out in panic when everything has gone um, down for you, right? So try as much as possible and diversify your life, diversify your skills, diversify your networks and try to figure out if if this was to happen to my job or my business, what are some of the other things that I can do? That way, I, I have found that the worry dissipates when you figure out what else you can do outside of what you are already doing. So those are the seven lessons that I learned from losing my job. I hope that that was... Um, insightful for you maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section have you lost your job before and how did you get past that particular um situation and if you are worried about losing your job and you have a very specific question for me you could also drop it down in the comment section below i'll be happy to answer some of them to the best of my ability so thank you so much for watching remember to stay encouraged to stay inspired and to remember that you are your biggest and your best investment. Invest in yourself, your skills, your talent, getting to really know yourself and having a high level of um, self-awareness. I feel like that has made me a lot of money and I know that it can make you a lot of money to just know your superpowers. So please share this video and also subscribe to this channel if you aren't already so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next episode of Finance Friday.